Yummier. Probably. Uh, let's uh, come to order for the <coughs> July 25th New Home Public Utilities Commission meeting. Uh, first order of business will be approval of the minutes. I'd offer that motion. We have a motion on the floor. Second. All second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Number uh, two on the agenda will be to uh, receive and file the report from the utility operations. Thank you, Vice President Swan. Uh, a couple of items to highlight for the month. Water Department completed a, a uh, pretty significant repair to the Water Line Association with the South Broadway project and eliminated a, a section of Maine that had, had recently with the project be, began to be the source of, uh, of, of uh, leaking water. So that was a, a big project and completed here just recently. I've talked about this before, but the South Side substation is now in service. It's actually serving load. And um, that's been a, just a, a real good project. We're to the point we're ready to close that out here within the next month or two. And I think when we re report back on the on the final finances for that project it's going to come in well within well under budget uh, and then lastly uh, electric production as I mentioned last month we're starting to see some load growth on our system and July has uh, produced another pretty high demand load for the city of New Ulm we peaked out at 45.9 megawatts on July 7th Again, somewhat weather dependent, but not overly hot on that day. The temperature was 92 degrees. My recollection of past peak days have occurred when we've been up in that 100 degree temperature zone. And um, for comparison, this July 17th of 2017, 2017 peak is the highest since July of 2011 when we had a peak load of 48.5 megawatts so that's notable highest uh, demand on the new home system in in six years so that's it for my highlights and I'm here for any questions you may have okay we'd also uh, like to recognize the employee of the month for June 2017th Patty Farber custodian and in the PUC administration uh, she's been employed by the public utility since July 2006 Patty is a stellar employee who recurrently goes above and beyond the standard responsibilities for her position. So please all congratulate Patty. Is there a motion to receive and order the file the report? I'll make a motion to receive and order file the report regarding utility operations during the month of July 2017. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign. Motion approved. I don't offer the resolution waive the reading commending Joel Fromm for 38 years of service with the New Orleans Public Utilities Commission. A second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Resolution. resolution. Oh, it's a resolution. Commissioner uh, Biernick? Yes. Commissioner Hillesheim? Yes. I think she has to call the roll. Oh, go ahead. Commissioner Biernick? <laughs> yes. Commissioner Fingland? Yes. Commissioner Hillesheim? Yes. Commissioner Swan? Yes. Okay, uh, item 3B, preliminary offering uh, statement go for utility revenue bonds. Well, this just summarizes the bond uh, sale for that's set for next Tuesday, and then we'll have that meeting to approve it next Tuesday night. Um, if you saw in there, they're estimating the interest rate for the PUC bonds to be 3.69%. I think that's high, but we don't know until we receive some bids <coughs> and then we did have the rating call with Moody's today and we received an a a double a2 rating which is the same rating we've had since 2010 so and it's a higher rating so we're we're hanging in there and doing pretty well that way so we have a better rating but we have potentially a higher interest rate and I don't know if that's based on the amount and the length of it or the city's um, is estimated to be 3.1 percent so we'll see where the bids come in when the next Tuesday I'd offer a motion to receive and approve the draft of the preliminary offering statement regarding the <clears throat> five million five hundred sixty thousand general obligation utility revenue bond series two thousand seventeen A. 
I'll second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 3C, the uh, agreement with Minnesota Valley Action Council and the Minnesota Department of Commerce Energy Assistance. This is just an annual agreement that we sign. It um, just states that we'll provide the information to Minnesota Valley Action Council as needed for them to award um, energy assistance as, as people qualify. They'll determine who qualifies. Um, they'll determine award amounts and they'll contact us when they need information. And then if, if this was an agreement we did not sign, um, those energy assistance funds could be dispersed directly to to the citizens or to the to the qualifying people, um, and then we don't know where that money would go if it would come to us to pay the bills or how they would spend that money. But Is there any change at no in the agreement from last year? No, nope, same as last year. Okay. I'll offer the motion to adopt resolution and waive the reading approving the agreement between the New Home Public Utilities Minnesota Valley Action Council and the Minnesota Department of Commerce to cooperate and deliver the Minnesota Energy Assistance Program for federal fiscal year 2018, October 1st, 2017 to September 30th, 2018, and to authorize the finance director to sign the agreement on behalf of the new owned public utilities. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, seeing none then, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Oh, it's a resolution. <laughs> Please. Commissioner Bernard. Yes. Commissioner Fingland. Yes. Commissioner Hillesheim. Yes. Commissioner Swan. Yes. Uh, item 3D, BP Energy Company prepay gas transaction. Hi, Chris. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, I'm here to uh, give a presentation um, with regard to an opportunity that's being provided to us from uh, BP Energy Company, which is our gas supplier. And uh, the opportunity um, is basically called a prepaid gas transaction. Um, this opportunity is, is not new to us. Um, it was something that was uh, looked at back in 2009 and again probably in 2013. In 2009 we were researching it. It was uh, going to be a, a prepay that was going to be through the um, Minnesota Municipal Gas Association um, with several uh, utilities throughout uh, Minnesota. However, um, the interest rates at that time, right about the time we were going to uh, pull the trigger on this, the interest rates took a dive. And um, so we tabled, um, tabled this particular prepay. So this um, new one is being brought forward. Um, the basic concept of a prepay is that private investors will sell municipal bonds for natural gas. And what they do is they take advantage, because it's, a, uh, the, it's municipals that are part of um, the bonding, and they're the ones that are receiving the gas, they will receive the, um, the spread between the tax exempt and private bonding. So that's where the, the savings to the private investor is. And then they're going to, um, in turn, allow us to participate in part of that savings. Uh, municipal, the, um, the bonding has to be all municipal participants in order for it to, to qualify. And what ends up happening is um, the supplier will provide a long-term supply forward contract to um, a, municipal, a municipal for any natural gas that um, that municipal is going to be burning. The municipal utility, which would be us and um, a couple, three other utilities, um, from Minnesota, for sure, um, would, ta would take this gas on a take and pay basis. And so um, we would get a discounted price from the index over the term of the contract. Um, the, suppliers, the supplier savings then will come from the form between the margin of the tax exempt and the private bonding. And the municipal gas utility savings occur on the discounted price from index. So the index price that's available to us, we would get at a per MCF discounted rate. Um, in this particular prepay, um, BP is going to sell bonds 
um, at a maximum payment plan of 30 years. So they're looking at a 30-year bond. Um, that organization then, they'll, they'll choose an organization. Um, that organization will then make up to a billion dollar prepayment to BP. And that payment will be to purchase this long-term gas supply contract. Um, the bonds then would be sold with a five to, year, five to ten year initial term and they could be repriced periodically over the 30 years or over the life of the bond. And f any future repricing would be at a minimum of five years. So then um, the organization would have the municipal participants, wi again, which would be chosen by, B by BP. There's going to be um, several of them. Um, there's po a possibility of three in Minnesota, and then probably some other um, municipal utilities across the country that BP does um, business with that would be part of this um, bonding also. And these municipal par participants would purchase and consume the prepaid gas supply. So uh, we would give a, um, a level of usage to them, and that would be the amount of gas that we would get um, on a daily basis from this contract. Um, as I said before, there's three other um, municipal utilities possibly that would be included in this prepay. Um, the contract is a take or pay arrangement. And so um, what you are locking in for is what you'll be taking, and, uh, but you are only gonna pay for the gas that's delivered. Uh, the only contract that New Alm would have would be with the organization that is issuing the bonds. And so um, we would not have any um, liability for the issuer's debt. It would all be in the contract between the supplier and New Alm. Everything else is upstream from that. So there's uh, limited li or no liability actually for any of the debt that's been issued. Um, I, like I said, uh, there's no upstre upstream risk. If the arrangement were to unwind, um, the risk to the PUC would be that we would go back to buying um, gas on the at index price. We'd lose the discount. Um, which is there, what we're doing now. Which is what we're doing now, exactly. Um, there is a remarketing, there would be a remarketing provision that would be um, in the contract. And that is for if, let's say, um, part of our load would permanently, we would lose part of our load permanently. There is an option to remarket that gas back out into the system. And so then our, um, the limit that we would be taking would be reduced by the amount that we could remarket back in. Um, at this point, the minimum discount um, that is allowable right now is 20 cents uh, MMBTU. Um, Depending on when these bonds are sold, um, what the interest rate is at that time will determine what the discount is going to be. But they've put in the minimum. It cannot be any lower than 20 cents. And um, there's a provision in there for, as I said before, for repricing. So every five to seven years, these bonds could go out and be repriced. If that were the case and the discount rate came in higher, we would also get to share in a portion of that um, discount rate. If the um, discount came in lower than 20 cents, at that point, um, Nuam would be given the option of leaving this prepaid transaction. And again, we would go back to just buying gas um, on in, at index price. The, this slide um, basically shows kind of uh, what the segmented bond pricing would be. So it shows the different scenarios of when um, these bonds would be pricing. So, you know, you can see the arrows there. They're looking at maybe six years, um, then again at another five years, another get, again at eight years. And it, and, um, it just kind of shows, you know, what the market discount would be, what the participants um, discount would be. And if you could see at the very end, you know, they repriced it at 11 years and it came in at 15 cents. And so at this point, we would have the option of leaving if we wanted to leave because it wasn't the minimum uh, 20 cent discount. Um, the next slide is, 
It's kind of confusing, but basically what I want to show you is that the contract really is between the participant and it's going to be between the supplier. So everything up here, um, we will not take part. That's, there's no liability to us at this point. Um, it's all going to be um, laid out in the contract between us and the supplier. And it's basically, as I said before, just a take and pay contract for um, purchased gas. So in summary, um, this, this method, again, is just for, it's, it's through the IRS regulations that gives the private, cus, cus, private companies um, to be able to take advantage of tax-exempt bonding. And for them, they get a lower bond issue. And for us being a participant, we get, a, get to share a part of that bond. Um, the, um, we did a kind of an off-the-cuff analysis of the possibility you know, of the savings to the private um, company. And we were assuming a $1 billion bond, which is what they're proposing, um, with a two-point interest spread between the tax-exempt bonding and between the private bonding. And um, we anticipated that the potential potential savings to the private company could be about 90 cents per MCF. And so if they're looking at possibly a 20 cent um, savings to us, so we're getting, you know, a little less than 20 percent or a little more than 20 percent of, of the total savings to the private company. Um, the advantages, of course, um, are that we would receive 20 cents or more, depending on the pricing of any future gas for the next 30 years. Um, this, as I said before, this isn't a new concept. It's something we've kind of been looking at for a while. This would give us an opportunity of possibly starting with a small load, starting small, kind of getting our feet wet. It, it would allow us to have some opportunity to maybe get into another one further on if we see interest rates rising. Um, again, we can opt out at any repricing point where the minimum discount isn't achieved. So if we don't like what we're seeing, we have the potential to get out at no risk to us. And um, again, the prepay would reprice at intervals throughout the bond. So we're not stuck at 20 cents. Um, there's potential for additional savings. Um, disadvantages, uh, we're committed to one gas company for a portion of our load, um, and that's going to be for 30 years. Um, it would limit our availability to participate in a higher priced product by whatever we chose to um, put into this um, prepay. So you can't you know, do this prepay and then put this prepay's gas into another one. Um, that would be excluded from any future. And then you know, the other thing is the insurity of the um, future of technology you know, with solar and wind. Um, you know, with gas usage, how, what's our load going to look like in 30 years? That's something that, you know, we can't necessarily um, forecast either. So um, there could be some disadvantages there. Um, however, there is that uh, remarketing option in um, the, the prepay that would be available to us. And so um, that's basically the end of the uh, presentation. Um, what, what staff is recommending is that we um, take part in this prepaid um, transaction at a volume of 20% of our average um, daily load or base load. Um, so it would allow us a reasonable benefit. Um, it would be about $40,000 a year. Over the term of the 30-year bond, it would be um, it was about $1.3 million. Um, it would also allow us to participate in any further prepays if this one works and we're offered another one at some time by BP and the pricing is different or better. It would give us some uh, room to be able to do another one. Um, this was presented to the long-term power committee. We um, wanted to get their take on it to see if we should bring it further to the commission. Um, they felt that it may be a viable um, opportunity. And so that's what we're 
here today to do. So if anybody has any questions. Um, just a couple. Okay. Uh, first, j just want to confirm, there is no upfront cost to the PUC for no. this, for signing this agreement. Nope. So the prepay is really prepay within the month or within the two months. The prepay, the prepay basically um, is referencing the contract between the supplier and BP because they're, gi they're giving them um, a, vol a bunch of money to go out and do capital projects. Okay. And so that's where the prepay is. They're prepaying for gas um, for 30 years and to be able to sell the bonds. We're not prepaying. Right. We're not paying. Yeah, yeah, that's how it seemed to me. Yeah. So just from yeah. a it would be, you know, the only change to us would be that the um, portion of gas, the 20% that we're locked in, we would no longer be buying from BP. We would be buying from this other supplier. Right. So they would supply us the 20% and then BP would um, supply us all of our additional loads. Okay, so my second question was, is there anything magical about 20%? I, you said that it's kind of a get our feet wet. Did we discuss higher, or lower? What, where, how do we agree on 20? We just, I think we just kind of um, chose about that amount. Um, you know, we have, set, we have up to 70% locked in right now in our hedges. And so um, I don't know, if Pat, or... It's a starting point. Yeah. Uh, Chris mentioned the concept of getting your feet wet here and getting familiar with the process. There's also the possibility if that spread continues to develop to greater levels that we could enter another deal, perhaps with BP or another company, where the share the, the portion that they're sharing back instead of 20 cents could be significantly higher. So if we're already locked in for 80 percent, let's say we'd have a limited ability to participate in anything that might or might not come forward down the line. So it keeps our options open moving forward. Okay, thank you. Do we know of other utilities that are? doing this yet or we talked to anyone? Um, we don't know. Uh, we know that there's three other utilities. They're um, about our size um, that are looking into this with us. Um, there are other utilities across the country that are doing it. It's not, it's not a new concept. Um, <coughs> like I said, we probably would be already in one if the economy hadn't slowed and the interest rate, I mean, that spread between uh, tax exempt bonds and private bonds became so narrow that there was no discount available um, to us. Uh, the, the back when we were looking at it, um, the discount I think was about 90 cents, but the gas prices at that time were also eight and nine dollars. So you can kind of see the, the relationship. We Excuse me. We have to sign a contract to get into this. Is that correct? We would sign a contract with the supplier. When yep. we talked about it the other day, was it kind of contingent on the city attorney looking at the contract and approving of it? Yes. So at that could be part of the motion, I guess. Exactly. Oh. At this point, we don't have the contracts yet. Uh, we're working on getting some of the side documents that have to be filed. But, yeah, that it would all be yeah. contingent on attorney approval. I don't mm -hmm. have a motion to direct staff to take part in the BP Energy Company Prepay gas transaction at a volume of 20% of estimated average monthly loads subject to the concurrence of the city attorney. I'll second. Okay, we have a first and second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Discussion? Yeah, there was a nine. Okay, we're good. Uh, Opposed, same sign. All right, motion passed. Thank you. Uh, 3E, proposal for consulting services. Uh, to approve the proposal from Black and Feech Corporation for an integrated resource plan study for the new home public utilities, not to exceed a cost of $128,000. Yeah, thank you, Vice President Swan. Uh, our utility engineer, Dan Perzig, is going to give a brief overview of the process that we went through to arrive at this point with Black and Veach. Good afternoon. This is actually the culmination of about a year's worth of work through the Long-Term Power Committee. We've looked at a lot of different options and we started in reviewing the technologies that are available and felt that it's time to revisit the integrated resource plan. The utility has done one in the past in 2006 where they looked at retrofitting or bringing coal back into the number four boiler. 
that one luckily we avoided that <laughs> and now we it's time again to review it with the discovery of new natural gas new generating technologies the changes of the regulatory market and um, we've got some larger pending maintenance expense felt this would be a good time to do this we have uh, done kind of a, a very detailed analysis of the three pr three proposals we received we went out for we offered four companies to give us proposals we got three back of the three after we got done grading them through a our scoring matrix which we scored them on staff experience staff and capabilities um, following what we were looking for out of our scope the pro their ancillary services not knowledge among other things we felt that two of them were too close to call so we exercised our option and had it, had two companies in for interviews the interviews <coughs> were structured with 30 minutes where they got to present whatever they wanted and the next 30 minutes were question and answer which kind of ended up being more of a conversation where we kind of ad hoc could ask any questions that we wanted them after this process we felt black and veach would be the right consultants for us at this time is there any questions i can help with i would just add that the long-term power committee reviewed the uh, selection last thursday and have forwarded the recommendation for black and beach to the utilities commission i'll offer the motion to approve the proposal from black and beach corp for the integrated resource plan study for new and public utilities for the contract did not to exceed cost of 128000 excluding travel expenses, and to authorize the city manager to sign the consulting agreement subject to review by the city attorney. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion has carried. Are you up again? Yep. 3F, proposal to rebuild the east side transmission line. Okay, this, this is a rest request from permission for the city manager to sign an engineering services agreement with DGR to do a detailed design and develop a bid package for totally rebuilding the line, the river section, what we're calling it, of the line from basically the wash plant or the concrete plant going across the river to highway county highway 21 i think it is mm -hmm. just that section right there and we also that's option a is a total rebuild they may or may not depending on logistics be able to eliminate a span by doing that saving saving some cost the other option is to replace the poles that are damaged both the ones that we have been told to replace and the ones that are scheduled as monitor because mm -hmm. just having people mobilized in here on site will be a significant cost and adding removing three more poles that are in monitor seems to make good sense so those are the two options we're having developed and then we'd probably have a unit price for removal of any other damaged poles if there are others we feel need to be removed during either one of these options. Is there any questions I can? I'll make a motion authorizing the city manager to accept and sign the proposal for the development of plans and specifications to rebuild the east side transmission line from DGR Engineering at an estimated cost of $53,850. I'll second. Okay, motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion pass. Uh, next item on the agenda, 3G. Proposal for control system for the Cottonwood River Station. And when the Cottonwood Booster Station was, <coughs> was built, uh, there was a lot of growth going on out there and uh, uh, the anticipation was that in 2017 they'd be building a new water tower uh, and they had staged they had planned to stage this construction inside the booster station uh, to adjust 
with the demands. And <clears throat> we just recently reached what they considered like the first stage, uh, which is uh, about uh, when there are about 20 houses there, uh, our demands started going up. We started getting a few people uh, in the summertime that weren't seeing the water pressures they wanted for sprinkling their lawns. And so we adjusted what we call a jo jockey pump. There's, a, there's three pumps there, one very small one that runs about 75 gallons a minute and two uh, large ones that are, uh, I think they're 800 or 1,000 gallons a minute. Um, <clears throat> their plan was to eventually increase the size of the jockey pump when they got to about 40 houses. When they got to 100 houses, they had to add another pressure tank. Um, so we're looking at this, and we've got a proposal here to use the company that programmed our SCADA systems. We have these two large pumps that are sitting there, and I just went out there this afternoon, and the jockey pump, which is a 75-gallon-a-minute pump, has over 5,000 hours on it just doing this, uh, coming on, running for about 10 minutes and shutting off. And uh, we have these two large pumps, which each have less than three hours on them. And so this proposal is to change the uh, programming of our SCADA system to use these large pumps instead of using them as fire pumps, starting them on with the VFDs at a much lower flow in about 200 gallon a minute range, and then alternating between those two so that the, that the wear on the pumps is evened out, and that if at any point, there is a fire out there and these pumps are running at a lower flow, then the computer system will override that and put them on as fire pumps. And um, so our, our proposal is to uh, have you authorize staff to hire automatic systems to provide SCADA programming at a cost of $5,592. There are two stages to it in, in the proposal, but I propose to do both of them sequentially so that we save on having them come back out uh, a second time. At, at, we've, we've budgeted $20,000 this year for making modifications out there. This leaves us enough money that if we had to put, replace that jockey pump that's a at 75 gallons a minute and we wanted to make it about uh, 150 gallons a minute or something like that, uh, that's in about, about $7,000. So we're still going to be under budget. Any questions? I just uh, historically, if you're lucky you got an old guy on the commission here. Um, Serves, memory serves me right, Brian. This happened before you were a city manager that we were thinking that we were going to have growth out in that neck of the woods. And in fact, it was before North Highland Road went in and before the diocese was developed. And there was a farmer out in that direction that thought he would develop like a hundred some acres or thereabouts. That all fell together. And so that's kind of where this started from with the idea that, yes, eventually there'd be a water tower out. Then down the road, there still could be. Mm -hmm. So uh, just some history on it from an old guy. Thank you, Commissioner Bernick. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'd authorize the city manager to sign the proposal from Automatic, Automatic Systems Company of St. Paul, Minnesota, to provide the SCADA programming modifications to the Cottonwood Booster Station at an estimate cost of $5,592. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, uh, I, to, I for approval. Aye. 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 Same sign for disagreement. Seeing none, uh, motion has passed. Number 3H, proposal for hypochlorite generation project. Okay. <clears throat> when we prepared the budget last year, we talked about this a little bit. We currently use chlorine gas uh, to disinfect our water with, and it is the cheapest form of chlorine that you can come up by. 
but over the years it's gotten, getting more and more regulated. Uh, there are more and more emergency plans that you have to have in place to have it. We've gotten through that by reducing the amount of chlorine gas that's on hand. Uh, we used to have ton cylinders on hand. We'd have three of them there uh, at a time. Now we have three uh, cylinders that each hold 1,250 gallons, or pounds actually. And so it's getting to the point in that building where we need new ventilation, uh, a new method to, well, we don't have a method right now to, con to totally contain a spill. If we have a spill, we have to have a plan for evacuating uh, our population in a radius of about a mile, mile and a half, uh, which would be a pretty significant uh, portion of the population. The prevailing winds would blow it from third north down towards the river. Um, and uh, so one of the techniques we have now of doing disinfection still providing chlorine is to generate a weak bleach solution which in this case we would all we would buy is electricity and salt and the salt would be a concentrated brine you'd mix we'd mix ourselves you put it in an electrolytic cell and the reaction between the water and the electricity and the uh, salt would provide us with it was called a hypochlorite and it would be less than 1% strength so even if that were to spill outside of our plant uh, there are no reporting requirements it's not considered to be hazardous. Uh, household bleach is about 3 to 5% solution and uh, so we had budgeted money to uh, start the construction for this year but um, I'm talking with a couple of engineers and talking to the, their concerns about how much we might have to have on hand to meet some state regulations that we would hire, we'd ask that the city manager would sign a proposal from Short Eric, Elliott and Hendrickson to provide engineering and bidding services uh, for the on-site hypochlorite generation project so that we could start this this year. Um, and then they would give us a, uh, a closer estimate as to how much we really need to spend to get this. Uh, we budgeted 185000 <clears throat> um, I think it's going to be closer to uh, 250 to 300000 by the time we get engineering and some of the other construction. There, there is some concern about if we had to keep 30 days supply of this on hand, the weight of that tank might require uh, some internal structural changes to the, to the plant. Uh, but of the two uh, quotes we had, one was more worried about it than the other. Uh, and uh, so uh, we'll get a better handle on that if we would go ahead and do this. And then... Um, for next year we would budget more money to, if it's necessary, to finish the project. We have, uh, we have it, space inside the plant to, to yeah. contain all this. So. so the intent here, George, if I might add, is for, to, get the, to get the consultant under contract here to start the design process to prepare a more detailed preliminary design report. Right. That report will come back to this commission for review and for refined cost estimates and then a decision will be made whether or not to include a budget allowance to right. construct we, this project. We hope to have that in, in September probably, the preliminary design report. Okay. George, what, um, so in the past we've seen some fluctuation in our chlorine levels. It's at times created different issues. Uh, what, uh, what kind of accuracy do you get from this kind of system? Or is that, are we talking different? Well, it's, it's going to be the same accuracy. We're going to be, we'll be pumping uh, instead, of, we'll be pumping product instead of drawing gas through a series of vacuum systems to get the delivery. The 
actual reaction out in the distribution system will be the same. Um, we, we have uh, some of the fluctuations that you're talking about uh, are s the changes in ammonia and the water coming in from, uh, from their wells. And uh, we are adjusting our plant to do what is considered biological, making biologically active filters, which used to be water didn't want to do that. That was a wastewater process and we didn't want any bugs growing in there but our filters now are, are, are ripening they call it and we're getting removal of a greater percentage of the ammonia so that the difference between the free chlorine and the total chlorine will be uh, more predictable. And so from a delivery standpoint it, it'll be similar but mm -hmm. from the other issues is you're better right. off. Okay. Yeah, I guess, you know, we'll have to see how it, we've, I've looked at this also, um, and we've never went that way because some of the consumables were, were quite significant in cost. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out, I right. guess. So, so ours will be basically salt. The vendor w has said that we could buy softener salt by a pallet at, at Menards. Our guys could dump it into a tank, create the brine. Uh, it would probably be cheaper to have a bigger tank and, and buy bulk salt. Uh, and then there'll be, uh, like I said, um, the only other consumable for us will be electricity. Interesting. I'll offer the motion authorizing the city manager to sign the proposal from Short Elliott Hendrickson to provide engineering, design, and bidding assistance services for the on site. <coughs> hypochlorite generation project for the water treatment plant at an estimated cost of $36,000. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item 3I, modifications to infrastructure surcharge. Thank you, Vice President Swan, Commission members. I've included in the agenda item here a packet or presentation that was presented to the PUC back in 2009. And, and at that time, a funding strategy was developed between the uh, PUC and the City Engineering Department for the replacement and rehabilitation of sewer and water infrastructure. And at that time, we developed a methodology that was sustainable in terms of funding requirements. We determined what the systems needed in order to be uh, replaced without failure. Uh, we developed a rationale for the revenue generation between fixed and variable type charges. And we developed a funding split between the PUC and the city. And that split was a 65 to 35 percent ratio. So this has worked pretty well for us for the last nearly decade. We've had levelized funding that we've contributed to city engineering. It's reduced the surprise projects. We've, um, we've worked well with the city engineering to levelize that funding requirement and, and they do the balancing of the, the annual actual project needs. As we discussed in May of 2009, the other divisions within the New Home Public Utilities, electric, district energy, and gas, they all pro provide for the rehabilitation funding for the respective infrastructure components within the enterprise fund-based charges to the customers, both fixed and rate-based. Similarly, within the water and wastewater industries, most municipalities are funding the replacement of their water and sewer infrastructure through customer charges. So the funding of the New Alm sewer and water infrastructure with a mix of fee and user-based charges and the city portion coming from property tax revenue, that is somewhat atypical. We've had recent discussions with the city engineering department and we have decided at this time at a staff level that's appropriate to transition to a more appropriate source of funding and to move away from the 65-35 split with reliance on property tax revenue to a funding strategy that would uh, provide all of the funding for the water and sewer infrastructure from uh, NUPUC, Public Utilities Enterprise Funds. 
So making this transition put us in line with the funding strategies of the other public utilities departments and with the industry standards. We've developed a, a phase-in plan, which is also included in your, in your uh, packet here. And it's a detailed financial model for the transfers that was prepared back in 2009. But the areas that were highlighted in blue are for 18, 19, and 20. And that's the three-year period that we would intend to transfer from 65%, which is current in 2017, up through 100% in 2020. Overall, in 2020, this is about a 7.4% increase to the Water Department Enterprise Fund and 6.1% increase to the Wastewater Department over the three years. That's the total increase and a corresponding decrease in the funding reliance of the city engineering department on the property tax base will be realized. So I would just uh, close with saying our, our water and wastewater utilities, we participate in various surveys throughout the year. We, we have evidence that our water and wastewater rates are competitive within the industry and within the local area. And while this would be a, a slight increase to those rates, we feel it will still be uh, competitive in our water and wastewater rate schedules and by moving forward with this change we're going to develop a, a funding strategy that's in line with standard utility practice and utilize system revenue to fund all capital maintenance projects for both the water and wastewater departments so that's our recommendation and I'm here to provide more information for you on the process that was used to develop the, the strategy back in 09 or any comments that you might have at this point. Does the City Council have to do some type of improvement to decrease the property taxes by that <laughs> amount? <laughs> how does that work? Probably not. <laughs> I don't know how that would work, but I mean, what they're <laughs> going to realize here is an additional revenue stream. And the detail here is it's about $225,000 from each division. So the utility water department will be kicking in an additional $225,000 and the wastewater department an additional $225,000. So there's $450,000 in new revenue to the city function. So however that pans out with the... Uh, Budgeting the balancing of the checkbook, I guess, is It'd the question. Be, I would not necessarily say new revenue, it'd be replacement revenue. Now, you know, we would have that funds to do other street projects that aren't getting done. If you look at the uh, the uh, plan, you know, we were thinking we needed to do about $2.5 million worth of streets every year, and we do about 1.5, you know. So you're going backwards. You're not getting as much street work done. So that would help us play catch up on, on our street work. Uh, so, and, and also understand that if the city were to, you know, like with new construction, the, the city bonds, we gotta pay it back. And the people pay us back for their, <coughs> their special assessments. We then, um, at the end of the year transfer ownership of the, that pipe and all that to the PUC you know kind of a thing that's what happened you know 15 20 years ago is that PUC didn't put a dime into that but they own it and so now it's converting more to a the PUC is is helping pay for something that they own so instead of at the end of the year getting you know two million dollars worth of infrastructure at no cost, but they have to maintain it in the future, uh, they're gonna be paying kind of up front for their own their own infrastructure. So it's really taking the burden off of the off of the city and putting it to the ownership of the infrastructure, which is the PUC. So in that respect it frees up uh, funds for the for the city to use in other in other areas. Is that surcharge per meter? Is that how that works? There is a, a certain infrastructure charge per meter per meter water and sewer, but there's also a component of this that's 
derive from the rates, the rates mm -hmm. on water and sewer. So they're about a 50-50 split. Okay. Funding that comes from the fixed charges versus the the rate based. The so it's a volumetric based charge. Am I, am I correct? If you if we do this, it would take uh, you would include uh, in our properties that don't pay real estate tax, which we have a number in town, schools, churches, etc. So now they'd be paying for this, which they hadn't in the past because they don't pay real estate taxes. Well, the, I mean, if they're a customer for water and sewer, they yes, will pay they more. They will be paying more yes, for the that's what maintenance I meant. of the lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd offer a motion approving of the modification to the infrastructure surcharge for <coughs> water and wastewater utility customers and to the rate-based transfers as necessary to provide for 100% funding of sewer and water collection, distribution, system replacement, rehabilitation through the enterprise's fund revenues. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passed. Item 3J. It's got to be a record. <laughs> Um, we're going to a uh, proposal feasibility study for the cooling tower parking lot. Yeah, this is a proposal to do uh, basically a feasibility study to find out what it's going to cost if we replace that parking lot. We did have uh, resurfacing and some seal coating in the budget this year. If you go back there and look, there's really nothing left to seal coat. It's coming apart in basically there's some potholes and stuff as soon as we, we could try to patch it but as soon as the snow plow goes by it'd be ripping the patches right back out of there so what we're doing is we're trying to develop basically two options one's more of a light duty option one's a heavy duty option depending on how we're gonna let the usage of that lot and stuff go on and we're just trying to find out what we're getting into so we can put it in the budget for a reasonable plan for next year and uh, this also will be including putting an ADA compliant parking spot in at the PUC if you notice that's kind of slid into this kind of admin project any questions so here would be my question Dan why don't you call up whoever does the paving in town MNR and say how much will it cost to do this and how much will it cost to do that they'll do it for nothing problem is is that we have been told by long-term employees and things what's underneath that parking lot is very questionable soils so now by having it engineered hopefully that we can save on the soil correction I'm anticipating they'll have some geosynthetics basically putting mesh down and stuff so we don't have to do a two three foot aggregate base maybe we can buy with six inches or a foot and do some cost savings that way so that we get the minimal section that still serves the purpose rather than paying way too much on extra materials that we may not or probably won't need good answer <laughs> <laughs> i'll make a motion authorizing the city manager to accept and sign the proposal from short elliott hendrickson Inc. for the development of a feasibility study on the cooling tower parking lot in the amount of $7,600. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3K. Add break room to the PUC admin building. Commissioners, uh, during our year-end reviews with our employees, there was a suggestion made that we develop a dedicated break room in the upper level of the administrative building. Uh, currently, our staff use the front conference rooms when available, and that's where we have our, our uh, refrigerator and, and cooking devices there. But there are times when these conference rooms are not available, and our staff that have a set lunch break are, are not able to access that room and 
and uh, unable to um, you know take take their lunch break. So there's a suggestion made that we have space available. It's underutilized at the PUC admin building. Our internal staff has uh, examined the space, prepared some plans for that space, and uh, solicited quotations to do pieces of the work that can't be conducted with internal public utility staff. We've estimated that this project will cost about $16,750, and that includes a 15% contingency. That estimate, for the purpose of that estimate, we have obtained two quotes for all of the work that will be done by outside parties. But we're intending that the majority of the labor will be conducted by public utility staff as, as time allows. So we're recommending the development of this break room at the PUC admin building provides a dedicated spot for our employees to have lunch <coughs> and uh, allows them to take a lunch break away from their desk for, for a half hour a day. There are similar facilities available at the City Hall and other PUC facilities. So we, we feel it's a relatively minor expense and uh, provides a, a great level of benefit for our employees. I'd offer a motion approving other remodeling project <coughs> to add a break room to the PUC administrative building. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 3L, surplus property. Commissioners, it appears that we have some surplus natural gas equipment, namely 114 meters that have been removed from service and several motor control centers from the wastewater department that have been removed from service due to the upgrades of the ATAD equipment at the wastewater plant. I'll make a motion to declare gas meters and wastewater electrical equipment as surplus property and authorize disposition pursuant to the requirements of the city code and charter. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 4A, list of claims to be paid, paid and to be paid. I'll offer the motion to accept the list of claims paid in the amount of $3,858,245.12 and approve the list of claims to be paid in the amount of $273,337.35. Second. We have a motion and second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 6A, uh, we're looking for a motion to adjourn um, until August 1st where we have a bond sale. I'll offer the motion to adjourn to 4 p.m. August 1st, 2017 in the City Hall Council Chambers, chambers to approve a bond sale being made at 10 a.m. August 1st, 2017. Second. We have a motion and second. Further discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned until August 1st.